Relationships. I'm Leela Starr, and we have a very special guest today, Sherry Herndon. I'm super honored about today's show. Sherry is very special. She is an ecosystem shaman as well as a whole systems architect. She's not only a thought leader, but um, a revolutionary and evolutionary in producing media and helping our world transform from the inside out, from a whole systems perspective, from and incorporating things like quantum physics into the here and now of our bodies. Um, she's also really excited about ecstatic awakening and embodiment. She's a wisdom keeper, a deep spiritual priestess. Um, it's really an honor to have you on the show today, Sherry. Thank you. Mm. Wow, thank you. That's beautiful to just feel the the words land as like truth, not just words, but to feel like, oh, right, yes, that is who I am. And I am in service to that. It is real. <laughs> so that feels good. I just invite us, invite people to really feel how we are shifting from the what I call the age of concept into the age of embodiment, which means that language has the potency to become more magical and to like invoke and to activate our DNA. So I can speak more about the DNA um, in a bit, but I just felt called to share that. Thank you, Sherry. So um, I want to use your oracling abilities today. Um, and mm -hmm. I know we spoke about some topics pre-interview and just feeling into the present moment as well as to what's really present for you here and now, what our collective might need to hear, um, what's most present, what's most pulsing. And let's, be let's begin in this present moment. Mm. It's always the perfect place to begin. So I'm just going to take a deep breath, tune in, and I invite everyone listening to do the same. Give yourself the luxury of stillness. Feel how that pause, the pausing from within and that still point from within you is so yummy and luscious and filled with life and information. <laughs> so, yeah, wow. Well, first I just have to say, I feel so good being here in your presence. <laughs> I think that's always a really good thing to notice, like the energy that we create in resonance ships, as some of us like to call it. So the resonance is vibration and frequency, and we can feel it. And we can actually like cultivate fields between us that are extremely coherent and they they begin to vibrate like this if we could measure our meetings we'd be like hey how's our seed of life uh, doing <laughs> it's gonna happen um we'd be like oh it's a little rough around the edges <laughs> it's actually really true i'm not just saying that for saying something it's like a it's an energy vibration and signature so um, feeling how we feel with each other and how we can actually uh, amplify what's working in a field. So tune in to like a higher um, vibration. And there's a beautiful, a beautiful woman joining us. I love that. Um, <laughs> we can tune into those, those frequencies. So we're like sitting inside of containers and fields of our own creation. And I think that we're just at the cusp right now of learning how to do that consciously, collectively. So that's really exciting to me because I'm very passionate about optimal everything. So like what we hear from um, Jamie Wheel and Stephen, um, what's his name, Kotlars or Kot, 
can't remember, but they wrote Stealing Fire, so the, the Flow Genome Project. So it's like when we're in a state of flow, we're in our optimal creativity. We're like in a jet, we're just in that slipstream. We're actually, we're just in a beautiful field where we're like, oh yeah, we can actually move with this energy in a different way. Um, that's the invitation um, for us. And I was feeling that then with you, Lila Star, and uh, feeling how we're learning new capacities. What's also most alive for me, a couple things I want to name. One is that our capacity to imagine is greater than we imagine. <laughs> so just turn on that imagination and realize that that's actually our creative force. Like, so the clearer we are in our own channel to source, the more that imagination can actually come out and like really be real in the world. Otherwise we, um, we either, we doubt ourselves, our, our critical mind says you can't do it. It's not possible or, I'm not the one to do it, or someone else should do it, or, or it's too hard, or any of those like thought patterns that are the old programming from the matrix, okay? So we're really learning how to actually like, oh, if we're more in a 5D world, or if we're actually navigating with quantum think distinctions in the social body, and the social body is actually becoming an enlightened social body, and we are coding everything we're coding everything um not just the coders um and in the technology and the programming which is awesome but also the divine feminine the frequencies that is coding i put up behind me the the sea it's the flower of life with the gene keys um pattern from human design but from the golden path of uh, the gene key profile that is looking at the sacred geometry of our a map of, of, of from humanity to our divinity and i can speak more about gene keys at any time to any one so something about just actually feeling in yourself the power of your ability to create and that we are stepping from the victim consciousness into creatorship um, and so when so that's that's what's most alive for me right there and i could speak more about imagination and innovation and creativity and all that the other piece that goes along with that is that we are um needing to alchemize the things that are in the way <laughs> and those are all the things that we avoid you know all the relationships so that are like kind of a little mm, edgy or there's we, we don't know, we get reactive. The mechanics of reactivity is just information for something that's in your way that is, whatever's in your way is the way. And um, I really get that as a kind of mantra. So that if you realize that whatever you think is bothering you or irritating you, or you get reactive or you feel victim or you want to shame or project or blame or any of those whole assortment of behaviors that's where you get to look at yourself which is once you get good at it once you get a little bit of a neurological pathway like we're rewiring everything right we're like woo, rewire um you we can do this much more easily so that our and we are embodying a clear channel um <laughs> i think i'll just stop there because i could just keep going on and on about, but I'll, I'll stop there for the moment yeah Thank you. I could just listen to you for ages. I'm loving, I'm loving, <laughs> loving this. Um, I want to go a, a step back to you. You talked about um, like cultures of concepts and us transitioning into like cultures yeah. of embodiment. And yeah. I want to just hear a little bit more about that distinction of yeah. being into that and what that looks like. Awesome. It's one of my favorite um, topics because it, uh, I love being embodied. I'm like, I do not, I never was like for, you know, 20 years ago, people would say the ascension and we're going to leave. And I'd be like, I do not want to go. I like want to like bring it all down into this body. 
you know, incarnate our divinity. So all the practices, the embodiment practices that we've known of for so long, from the Taoist to the Tantric to, you know, yo ooh, to yoga, um, all of those are these ways of getting really connected to the body. So I'm going to speak about this transition from what I call the age of concept to the age of embodiment. Now, I just upgraded that the other day to the age of ecstatic embodiment because, well, that's really what we're talking about because we are, we are ecstatic beings. And by ecstatic and orgasmic, I don't mean just from the second chakra orgasmic, okay? I mean orgasmic from the whole system, okay? And when you actually use a tantric um, path, like I use the Radiant Sutras, those, those 112 practices, they tune you in to this dance of the divine feminine and masculine, you know, Shiva and Shakti, this like yin and yang, this like fluid dance that's happening on the planet. And the Humbatsman, the Mayan elders said, I remember him saying this, came to Seattle 1995, uh, and he spoke at a Quaker center and he said, the world will, we won't be able to change this world or shift this world um, until the balance of the masculine and feminine is happening. So we could speak about all ways that the balance of the masculine and feminine are coming down, okay? I, we could do like a whole hour on that, but just know that that's happening. So um, I wanna say something else to kind of preface this embodiment piece is that, um, you know, our science um, thinks that it gives us all the answers and we know that there's all these gaps in our understanding. So when there's all these gaps in understanding, um, we either have to like constantly say, oh, wait, that isn't the truth. I'm going to hold space for like what is coming. That's why our mind, after 2012, there was like the lid was taken off. The kind of the, the mantle holding us down is like gone, gone. So we have to keep like going, that's right. I don't have to have those limitations anymore. So the scientists used to say um, that we had five senses. Okay. So five senses, and then they said we have like kind of recently or something. Oh, no, we have 20. Okay, well, that's really nice. Well, the ancient Egyptians, who I think probably knew more, they said that we have over 200 senses. Okay, so let's just start to imagine those senses. And when you get turned on to the Radiant Sutras, which is a translation of a 5,000-year-old text called the Vijnana Bhagavata. Tantra, 112 practices for embodying our divinity through all the awakening of the senses, you begin to understand what this body is actually capable for being a conduit between heaven and earth. Oh my God, it's actually true. So I've heard those words for so long. I am a conduit between heaven and earth. 20 years ago, I felt it. I like knew it is, I, I believe it, you know, like believe it till it's, you know, it's here, but it was like, but no matter how much I believed in the mind, from the mind, it's like the mind is now going to the heart. And the heart, and Einstein said, you know, it, imagination is more important than knowledge. And also the longest journey is, well, other people have said it too, is, is like the, the mind needs to be the servant of the heart. So when the mind is the servant of the heart, um, the heart intelligence is, becomes our guide. And another little factoid that I think is really important to keep uh, on this distinction of this shift is that uh, we have, some people say, 50 to 100 trillion cells in our body. So let's just, for the sake of it, say we have 100 trillion cells. And in e each of those little cells, there is a little DNA packet. So our great scientists, you know, the smart ones who like think that they know all the answers, they used to say that we have 98% junk DNA. How is that possible? 13.7 billion years of evolution and we have 98% junk DNA? No, no, no. So we know that what that truth is, is that there's like latent codes in our DNA, okay? So this is why the Gene Keys is one of my favorite pathways and we can talk about that for accelerating our, our divinity. Um, so, when you stretch out a DNA packet, it, it goes to two and a half inches. 
I love this. Two and a half inches times 100 trillion is, give or take a little bit, 10 billion miles of DNA in your body. So I just, let's just say that it, 10 is a high number. I know 10, 100 trillion, it should be 50 trillion. Okay, so you got 5 billion miles of DNA in your body right now. How is that even possible? So that's because we're in quantum, quantum worlds and energy and all that. So I just invite you to kind of feel for a moment how expansive and vast and cosmic you are from the inside out. And that that is latent capacities and codes that are waiting to be turned on. And that's part of this shift from the age of concept to the age of embodiment is to really realize like what these bodies are capable of. And another thing that feels really exciting about um, this shift is that like feeling this beautiful container here, that's like who's, who we currently see right here, but also the rippling out of the field, how this energy goes into the field, and how this as a node in the noosphere, it's beautiful work that you guys have been cultivating with your show and the other shows, it's like, this is like an amplifier in the noosphere. So we're like impacting the field in this now, and in the now, and the now, and the now, and the now unfolding. Uh, so when we gather in these fields like this, we can upgrade each other with sitting in a container that has sufficient coherence, like the, the, the energy frequency of the seed of life. And we can tune into each other. And often that happens initially, at least easily, through silence. Um, and I really just want to invite all of us and whatever our places are where we go and work and our teams and our families, create spaces where you have silence together, where you don't have an agenda, where you don't, you're not you know, doing a guided visualization, although sometimes that's a great way to come in. But just start to experiment with what happens when you open yourself up and you sit in your gift frequency, you know, the, the frequency of creation, and you allow that to be penetrated by others around you, and you allow yourself to offer up that. And then we really discover, oh, how we're one, right? So we're one and we're many. <laughs> oh, so juicy. I love this topic of, of fields of coherence. Um, a long time ago, I actually went to architecture school and it was mm -hmm. primarily because I was finding the chaotics of space and I was, I was feeling the dysfunction of society and I wanted to surround myself or create spaces in which I felt free and I felt like I could bring my genius forth as well as others could. And I think it's something that I'd love to hear you speak a little bit more about um, how we create these fields or you know maybe some tools or tips so we can bring these fields of coherence to our family to our work environment to our relationships um, because for me someone who's come with these codes of, of very harmonic fields i often find the world to be very chaotic and could you speak into how we can maybe hold some of that better yeah so create those this is, thank you for that question, and also just uh, for your, the background that you have in architecture, and I think it's so much the divine feminine yearning for beauty. Um, I mean, beauty is elegance of design, it's, the, it's a perfection, it's an, you walk into a space or a temple or somewhere and you're like, your whole body goes... Ah, some people say that enlightenment is where the entire body is completely relaxed. So we hold 
inside, some people say the samskaras, the, 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 the core wounds of humanity or the, the, the tightness, the tightening, it's all over our bodies. That's just why I love breath work. Okay, I can like, let's just put in a big cheer for dancing, shaking, walking, chi walking, you know, you name it. Breath work. Oh my God, who knew? Do some deep breathing. All of a sudden you go into another, other places and you get to the places that are stuck inside you. And then you're like unwinding them, okay? And the unwinding is a personal and a transpersonal experience. You're not just unwinding it from inside your body, you're actually impacting the larger field where there's all this transpersonal stuff in the collective. So whatever we do in ourselves to bring more beauty, to bring more coherence into um, systems, and I'll speak more directly what you were asking, but just to finish this thought, the more we can do that, the more we are creating fields in which we can fully show up. So. I don't know about all of you beautiful people, women, um, but I think it's been a rough ride for some of us for how we've navigated in our culture and in our family upbringings. And you know, there's been a lot, obviously awesome, good stuff. And we know what we're capable of creating. So beauty is for me, it's like the, the beauty way. The Navajo have the beauty way. Nanado, may you walk in beauty. And that is my path. If you ever came to my temple, you'd walk in and you'd go, oh, <laughs> I miss my temple. I'm here at Sunrise Ranch and living in with Barbara Marks Hubbard. I'm having an awesome time here, awakening the new species and um, activating the 52 codes, which I can share as well. So I would say that there is a, when we pay attention to the longing that we have for whatever that might be, um, clearer communication, um, more ease and grace in how we make decisions, um, how we listen to each other, how we can sit and hold space from the quantum field and, and actually hold space and not say a word and be holding a frequency. So we talk about that we're frequency holders. Um, and there's there's the shadow, the shadow level um, is, is like has the most incoherence in it. And as you rise up from victim consciousness, fear, hatred, you know, all that stuff, it's a very ah, like kind of constrictive energy, joy, compassion up here, that frequency. It's like there's a humming. It's like the, the hum it's like, oh, you know, it's the, it's the vibration of creation. And um, so we can, there's different levels of how we can tune fields or create them. Um, and I've been studying this, well, probably for a couple decades, um, more indirectly in this like circles and working with volunteers and working with how we work together. And then it moved about 17 years ago, I came into uh, really the understanding of collective intelligence, which means, for example, we would create systems which each of you, um, we would make want to make sure that your gift and your intelligence is received, heard, and welcomed even if you were a voice of diversity, which just means you're like seeing something that others are not yet seeing. So a lot of times we just wanna go homeostasis or we wanna go with like ease and people just really don't like conflict because they were probably raised in discipline and punishment culture, which is painful, you know? It was like, I mean, I was raised by a very judgmental father and um oh god it just like hurts to kind of think about that whole stream of discipline and punishment in our culture um so uh i just want to catch my thread here um creating these spaces that feel good so collective intelligence invites everybody's genius to be a part of it and that actually because we are facets of the divine, we need each other. We each have something that's needed. And it may be that your piece or what you know isn't quite ready to be fit in. 
the right placement isn't yet in. And sometimes we have to have patience for that, but we can still be open to it. So collective intelligence, and then also collective wisdom and collective consciousness. So we can, there's so many resources and tools for how we can actually listen to what is emerging from the middle and create spaces in which we actually are listening for the emerging future from the center, not from any one person. So we come from pyramidal intelligence um, to global collective intelligence, okay? It's like a shift. The civilizations were built by pyramidal intelligence and um, the patriarchy and all that. And it did great things. Um, and now we're, in, we're actually moving out of that really fully um, into, uh, well, we, we are the one, we're, we have to reprogram ourselves. That's why whatever I'm doing inside here in all of my relationships is where I'm doing the greatest work in the world, okay? And we, um, I tend to be a systems girl as well. I'm like out there in the global systems. I've always been that way, but when it comes right down to it, it's all right here. So how am I tending my relationships? Um, can I jump to that about um, out social alchemy or do you wanna prompt me on um, like kind of a little bit deeper on some of how to con create those containers? Uh, I, I feel the transmissions being received. I'd like you to continue with your flow. Okay, good. Um, okay, so this is about a relationship as like spiritual practice. And relationship, when people talk about that and they talk about just the intimate relationships, I'm, I'm always adding in when I post on Facebook, you know, I curate a lot, is I always say, and this has to do with every single relationship that you're in, actually. <laughs> so um, there's, a, there's a social alchemy that's going on, okay? And the social alchemy is kind of, I touched on that earlier, is where we butt up against each other, where there's friction, so, and where there's karma. And if we actually could understand and really get that that friction is like this fabulous opportunity, we should be like jumping up and down and going, right on, there's karma in the room, let's go. Because when we unravel it, we are unraveling the, the tight places in humanity, okay? This is a holographic universe. <laughs> I mean, I love remembering this and I wish, I wish there were people that reminded me more often. Sherry, I mean, I remind myself enough, but I really do wish that we weren't so fearful of the um, challenging places. And we all know, we see it in the big world, all that drama, it leads to war, okay? And then even in our beautiful communities, you have things like, um, we don't resolve conflict. Um, we put things under the table. We go into denial. We say, um, no, that's not me. We don't take re personal radical responsibility um, because it's, it hurts, you know? It's like, it's been hard because you probably learned some really bad habits and your parents probably did things that weren't ideal because they learned them and they learned them and they learned them. This is the generation but we get to change all of that because we are now consciously evolving. This is so thrilling. I mean, we really are in the age of the prophecies and it just, we can't like bring it home inside the body enough. So it's inside the body here. We're doing all this work inside here. And then, then we have this, and this is where our hearts, the relationships are where, where did we shut down? Where did we shut off our heart? Where are we disconnected from ourselves? Where do we dishonor ourselves? So that's all victim consciousness. Victim consciousness is like, wants to make ourselves a victim or some blame someone else. We do that all the time. Power structures, all that. Well, this is all about sovereignty, okay? This is about reclaiming true sovereignty for ourselves and for the planet. And then we will be creating from this place and within ourselves, the beautiful structures. The problem is a lot of times that we have been for a while and we still do this, I see it, it's getting better, but it's got a little ways to go and we can accelerate it if we want to. Um, we can 
um, the more we take care of this and our relationships between each other, the more we are coming from a clear place in which our creation is coming from a clear place, which is, um, is when it feels really, really good. Oh, I just love that. We've got like a, a, one of our beautiful sisters. She's like doing yoga while we are here together. Thank you. I love that. Ah! <laughs> We're going to like feel it and breathe with you. Um, so here's another thing. This is a, there's a quote that Barbara Marks Hubbard has in her um, book, 52 Codes, which anybody wants it, I can get it to Lila Starr and she can give it to you as like a PDF for free. Um, and it is uh, 52 Codes, why if I turn keys to there we go, no. Um, so the fifth, there's a, there's a code in here, um, that is, and I'm just trying to pull it up. It wasn't where I wanted it to be. It's code 17. So there's 52 codes. These are all codes that came from um, Barbara's like kind of universal self or higher self. Um, and I want you to really feel this one as I read it because it has to do with our desire. Okay. Now, no, we're not talking about low vibrational desire. We're talking about your higher purpose desire. Okay. We're talking about the deepest part of yourself, um, that essence. So here's code 17. As essence, activate the spiritual force of your universal self. With the full power of intention, little parentheses, we could talk about intention because that's how we create fields, okay? Well, let's like mark that one. With the full power of intention, call forth this highest aspect of your being. Your universal self calls on the God force to act as the agent of your conscious evolution. So we can like choose this, choosing, choosing. That's our will. That's our sovereignty. It's all our choice, all our creation. Evolution proceeds ever more by choice than chance, conscious evolution. And here's the, the line that I wanted to really offer into our field. Ask clearly and boldly for your deepest heart's desire. Coded in that desire is the blueprint of your evolutionary potential. Oh, I love that. I love that. I'm just soaking in that right now. Mm. I think something that comes true for me right now when I feel into that, it's, it's this desire to, to be in the world in a community where I, I can flow freely mm. and I can show up in my fullest embodiment, tuning, and harmonizing with every new moment and not be restrained to one role or one box or mm -hmm. you know one timesheet for my worth that I'm mm -hmm. able to ecstatically mm -hmm. or whether that's ecstatically dancing or ecstatically praying or meditating in silence that I get to be wherever I need to be in perfection and be totally valued honored supported and thriving so breaking through all those constrictions and constraints and boundaries that we've created for the human to fit into the world and have to sort of climb our way up some ladder to receive some level of perceived wealth or worth that's not even real and so mm -hmm. breaking down those paradigms come back into that that field of sovereignty for myself as that embodiment and then for all of humanity mm -hmm. um, so feeling into that desire field what's pulling us forward or what's pulling myself forward to create these eco communities where we can like you said explore and and be the beauty way versus maybe the patriarchal way um, so can i respond to that yes please do yeah thank you um well you've just done it an it's just perfect what you just did because you took that code and then you named what your desire was okay so I want us to really get 
that that desire is how we are creating the world. They're not separate. It's not like I have this desire for to be liberated as a human, to really be able to come in and be polymorphic and have my full expression as a divine being to be come out into the world. Oh, I just got like total, whoo, like, whoo, that was like, um, um, and, and then to create these eco villages and then to create the new economic models, which you're working on, I'm working on, beautiful beloveds are working on, it's happening. Oh my God. And we keep getting to be designers. We get to be architects of the future, as Bucky used to say. That's exactly what we're being is architects of the future. And it comes from this beautiful place of like, wow, I know what I'm needing. So we've come out of like, if we look at Maslow, um, Maslow, Abraham Maslow had his hierarchy of needs. And how he just came to this was he was meeting with people all over who were fulfilled in their work. And he was like, what's up with these people? They're so happy. Um, they're doing something. They're living into their potential. Okay, so he was speaking about the human potential. And right now we're speaking about human potential okay, in all levels and embodying it and being the advanced wave in humanity and also social potential, that we are igniting and catalyzing social potential. Well, our design of our current systems, if the little hierarchy of needs, you have survival. And then it moves upward to self-realization or self-actualization. And I like to say that's um, collective realization. That's like collective awakening. We're awakening as a new species. Um, as like a, um, into our true nature, however you want to describe that. So we are actually creating the systems that will support us moving up because our current economic system is based on survival and scarcity and debt. I mean, it's just, it's, it's totally insane. And we're finally kind of going, hey, this is really insane. And there's more of us who are saying it and realizing that we don't have to just complain. We get to say, I want to create. And even if you don't hear something else, it's really important because I've been around a while and I have been holding to visions. I'm, I am a vision keeper and there is nothing you can do. No one, nowhere, no one on this planet that could pull me away from my mission. Okay. That's like me and my incorruptible heart. It's just impossible. So when I'm on, when I'm on, I'm like, that's mine. And if it doesn't happen 20 years ago, 15 years ago, five years ago, six months ago, I tell you, these things, they come into being and they happen because we hold the vision long enough. And then collective vision holding, okay, that's the quantum field of the intention field. Now, we should be starting and doing collective visioning from a high place of where we clear the field of the ego, and we all know when it's there, clear the field of the ego, have processes for where we can do that, and then we set intentions, and then we find the shared intention, we line around intention. So we don't have to have agreement about opinions. We have a alignment around intentions, that becomes a strange attractor in the quantum field, okay? That is actually what can move things into manifestation. So just inviting us to actually create those spaces, it's simple, it's not tricky technology, it doesn't take hours of processing, you know? You can, we can actually get good at clearing our field and doing spiritual hygiene. You know, something else I want to speak to that's really related to this is something that, um, you know, this has been in, I've known about this work of John Wellwood, who I love. I, I encourage you to look him up. He was the first one in like the 80s or something to coin the term spiritual bypass. And how, what he saw was that we just wanted to stay in the everything is good, everything is fine, I'm just going to be in this high vibration place or whatever you want to say. I'm just happy and it's all good. But at the root of that, there's an avoidance and a denial and you're, you're just using 
spiritual language and stuff, which is not actually embodied, okay? And when you do that too much, then you just skim the surface. So when I see people and friends and colleagues, when they're kind of using spiritual bypass, I'm like, if I say anything to them, it's not to like make them feel bad. Sometimes people don't want to be told things too much or they're not ready for it or whatever. But um, it's because we're only skimming the top of our potential. So when we love each other, we are willing to speak truth. And you don't speak truth to someone and say, hey, I think you're slipping in your integrity and you're fu you fucked up. You don't say that. Like, who wants to hear that? I don't want to hear that. But I want to hear, hey, Sherry, I really, you know, you said that you would do this thing. And, and I'm just, you know, I'm just curious why you hadn't done it when you said you would or, or whatever it might be. And I can go, oh, wow, I forgot. Or um, I, I totally messed up. And the beauty of spiritual hygiene or clean organizational practices or good teamwork or whatever you want to call it, good family dynamics, you know, governance systems, the foundation is we clear our field. Because as those of us who are empaths and can feel energy and read energy, we know when there's little things in the field. Some people maybe can't feel it. And if they can't feel it, they're like, what's the wrong? And there's nothing wrong. And it's like, well, actually, no, it's not wrong. It's just not optimal. So it's an invitation for how we communicate from a loving place. And it also takes courage. So I really just want to invite all you beautiful people to feel into courage. Courage is the frequency that moves us into the higher frequencies. Um, and it's a power because it comes from the will, the, 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 the sock, the, the, our, you know, our um, solar plexus. And we're really, this is also the age of solar plexus, okay? It's kind of shifted um, for us. And that means will, as above, so below. My will aligned with the divine will, the higher pattern, you know? We are the pattern and we are becoming the pattern. We're being and becoming at the same time. It's really yummy. I also want to just say something about um, in the Gene Keys, there's this, I think we all probably, hi, kitty. Um, we all have this, um, I know I do, so I'm going to speak to it, um, um, seriousness, right? You've been in the meetings where we're like, oh my God, we all take ourselves so seriously. We're like, we, and you can feel it. So it's a vibration. And in the Gene Keys, um, that maps to the I Ching and is a real transmission. And I encourage all of you to activate this and I'll send a link and, and we can figure that out, um, how to get it out there is, um, is there's 64 keys and there's shadow frequency, gift frequency, and then the divine frequency. Well, here's one of the keys. The shadow is seriousness. Okay. Seriousness. Oh God, I love it. The gift frequency is delight. Oh my God, seriousness goes to delight and delight goes to ecstasy. Okay, so I am, I'm a bliss ecstasy girl, but I will never be bliss and ecstasy without doing the stuff that needs to be transmuted. It's never fake. So whatever's in the way is the way. So I just want to invite us to watch to like lighten up because this is deep work we're doing, okay? And we're doing it on behalf of the world, whatever we're doing in the world. Whatever we do to transmute or to clear or to, um, to invite um, from ourselves or our, our beloved co-creators um, into their gifts, it takes courage and we're transmuting. So we are the modern alchemists, okay? This isn't like fake. I'm not just saying it like, oh, that's cute. I'm going to put that on my resume. Well, put it on your resume when you're doing it. And then you can put it on your resume and then you will have a power that cuts through the samsara and the maya, okay? We're removing veils. I tell you, the veils are being able to be removed more and more and more, okay? And the only way that we can really pay attention to them is when we have enough stillness or quiet to like see it and then to like walk through those. And it's a felt body experience it's not a mental experience because a mental experience cognitive co cognition always leads okay but it isn't actually embodied 
So then you can't manifest the beauty of the form until it's embodied. It will be a pearl. So our invitation is to just um, go the whole way and um, feel ourselves as divine um, presences on the earth waiting to be unleashed with our genius. Uh, feeling that Sherry for those of you watching we're with Sherry Herndon and I just learned from getting your bio that you were one of the co-founders of One Becoming One which is one of the new paradigm structures the hybrid church um, nonprofit model that the Earth Nation is is using we are yeah. the Flower of Life Society Church and I'm just so honored and I just want to take a moment and say thank you for spearheading that and for giving us that um, that organization so that we could like move more freely and move from more of that that temple space as mm. we do the, the global work mm. because that's what's really important for me as we build these communities as mm. that coming always from that that mm. space that you're speaking into mm. um, and that heart field and so by having these structures we can then rearrange ourselves and we rearrange ourselves in a DAO um, mm -hmm. to not only embody that in the daily, but embody that from the sort of the, the world scope, and they can recognize this as embodying something both you know legally as well as how we actually are being. So yeah, this is actually really important. I want to speak to this really briefly because we're looking at scales, right? So we're you know we're holonic. Everything's nested. So we have like the individual, and then it goes all the way up to the cosmic. Okay, and those are all nested. They're all a whole and they're all a part of a larger whole, of a larger whole. That's why when you have the core of that fractal, like in the Fibonacci sequence or the golden mean, it's like, that's why what I say that all that we've been talking about is the core of the spiral. So when we're like, mm, we got that core of the spiral and then we're in a collective and then we're humming. Wow, the enlightened collective on the planet, okay? People have been talking about this. We're up that, we're right there. We're not quite there, but there we're right there. I mean, it's not far away, like 10 years from now. It's like next month. It's, you know, a couple of months from now. I mean, this is, whoo, my God, big. Um, the, when we move up in the social body, um, from we, we have to have containers, okay? And right now we have to have these legal containers. At some point we won't have legal containers. They'll just be sovereign, they're just containers. So the, the free association, the free church, it, One Becoming One is a spiritual ministry and I'm a minister in One Becoming One. I love that, I am so happy about that. You can't even believe it because I really am quite revolutionary. Like um, I'm like, you people are, I, you can't be revolutionary enough for me because I just want new systems. I don't want to fight the old ones. It's, you know, it's not enough to slow the rate of destruction. We must increase the rate of creation from the frequency of this higher place, okay? So it's all needed. Some people are working within systems. Some people are like holding things at bay, like Standing Rock, thank God. And at the center of that was prayer, okay? That was amazing. And that's like continues to ripple out through those beautiful beings who were there, through all of us, creating this incredible global field. Um, but we need those legal structures. And those, that is when we will really, really also feel the hybrid of what's working with the current system, the economic model, and what's outside of it. And when we really start to ignite all the change of like distributed autonomous organizations and the blockchain and everything, we, we're just going to be starting to create new governance systems all over the place, okay? So we are going to be um, really the pioneers of that new world because we're embodying it from the inside out. And the more we embody it in truth, the more we become kind of emissaries of the new paradigm, this like ambassadors um, that are vibrational ambassadors, you know? We actually impact the fields that we walk into um, and the structures, the more the structures are like getting ready for it, because right now it's like any structure that's comfortable in homeostasis, they will just fight you. <clears throat> You cannot move a homie like a system that's stuck. This is like, you know, a lot of the stuff that Barbara has worked with in Irvin Laszlo, which is, he, he talks about, a, we're in a chaos window. Okay, so it's awesome if we can see and reframe stuff going on. A chaos window is like, you can't make radical quantum shift in a system that is 
stuck, okay? But when, I mean, stuck as in it's static. It is like, <clears throat> well, when you have chaos, you can actually create a laser, one becoming one, we were working with this, the light star, of coherent energy coming from a all the fields, the islands of coherence in a sea of social chaos, oh my God, we're doing it, is we then connect, we're connecting. That's why we all want to connect, you know, with our networks and we have to do it in good ways. The more we do that in an embodied way, in that coherence field way, the more we become a force of holding positive, coherent images of the future um, that penetrate into the current system and can shift it. This is a trim tab. Okay, this is one of my favorite trim tabs. So when people tell me we have to change everything and get to the masses, I'm like, no, that is not even good science or good math or higher math or understanding the way quantum systems work or how systems take non-linear jumps. We are no longer in the Darwinian world alone. We are in a quantum world. Now it's an in, it's an in both and, so it includes, you know, Newtonian and mechanistic universe. But we've just we're we're like, yeah, down there, incremental. That's how we used to do things. Now we're in the jump time. We can take quantum leaps and coherent collectives holding images of the future. This is Fred Pollack's work, images of the future. I could do, I, I spent two years setting up a center in Seattle. It didn't take off, but I was, we were, we did a lot of adding nutrients into the soil and um, it was going to be a center for the images of the future. And he was looking at what is the one causal factor that can transform um, the world, causal, shift it from the dark ages to the Renaissance. Okay. And what he discovered was, uh, a small group of people, the edges of culture, holding a sufficiently coherent, positive image of the future. That means we are more powerful than we even know. And we are just beginning to understand the nature of our collective power out in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. 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 Your wisdom is deep. So much. So much, Sherry. Thank you. Um, we usually make time for questions. We have a few more minutes. I just want to check in with your schedule. If we go like a few minutes over. Um, yeah, I have till uh, like 2.20, but I, I have to go to another meeting. Yep. So maybe we'll just maybe open yeah. it up for about five, 10 minutes for questions. Totally. That have been listening. And I just, wow, I, I, I really, I want to just support you and promote you. And uh, Sherry has her podcast, Heart of It All. Um, the link is posted in, in the Facebook feed. So, ah, who has a question? And I want to say one more thing. Yeah. But just before you go to those questions, I want to just say that that when one is bringing forth um, whatever it is that I have to give, my prayer is always, may it be of highest service. So it has to do with the people listening. Just like a great musician, they're not sitting up on the stage just playing their best set ever. They're playing to an audience who's just going, yeah. So I want to just uh, say yay for um, the beautiful audience. Okay, thank you. Before anyone speaks, I want to get a pulse in the room. I think there's about seven of us. How many people do have a question for Sherry? We got one. Okay. So for right now, we, and there's a couple. So I might just limit it to those two questions and we'll go ahead and unmute uh, Sperry Andrews. Welcome. Hello, everybody, and great to be here with you all as the one consciousness that we all are. Um, Sherry, I'm so happy to meet you uh, and uh, know that you're doing this work, uh, which I've been involved with all my life, uh, and as a scientist of uh, consciousness, uh, bringing thousands of people to unity consciousness uh, and resolving any way in which we're chronically contracted uh, physically or psychologically for over 30 years. 
Mm. Internationally, I have a, my own institute where we've brought together uh, world-class eminent scientists to objectively, uh, neuroscientifically show that we're indivisible on instrument under double-blind conditions, even when we appear to be thousands of miles apart, mm. uh, using science as a stepping stone to demonstrate, you know, as a world religion, if you will, that we are indivisible on instrument. We're, we're not separate at all. Nothing can separate us. Uh, we're not separated by space or time, energy, energy or matter, or mind or body, or personality. Mm -hmm. So uh, being able to uh, look at this uh, for the left brain, patriarchy, military, industrial, political, medical establishment uh, as incontrovertible evidence it was inescapable. You can't get around the fact that we're indivisible, <laughs> that we're all one single consciousness, timeless awareness, etc. Uh, and that we can, when we are aware of being awareness together and experience it in a fully embodied way at a bio cellular biological level, uh, we see what nature is intended for us. So I would love to collaborate or uh, co-create or because we're, uh, I'm working on a series of films as well as a launch of a social media service for free uh, to be available around the clock 24-7 in multiple languages wherein people can access their combined uh, consciousness and access their, uh, their collective intelligence, mm. etc. So perhaps there's something that we could accomplish together. If you go to Connection Institute, Mm -hmm. .org, Connection mm -hmm. Institute, all one word, connection is singular. I was just Find there it. recently, so uh, oh, we're right. in the, yeah, it, it's, it's perfect. It's just the perfect alignment. So yeah, I was like, oh, yes, I, he's awesome. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I'll leave it there. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. I want to just uh, respond to this because you're, what you're doing is you're, you're naming an invitation to play. And to bring what you're holding with, with, with what I'm holding and others. And when that happens, we actually create uh, synergies and we have the infinite game. So we're all, we're all playing more and more. There was the finite game. Very boring. We're done with that. We're now in this infinite game, right? The, the, the upward quantum spiral, as I put it. So I love that in, in, invitation. And thank you so much for your work. Um, for so many years and some of the most important pioneering work. Thank you so much, Sherry. I don't know how to reach you, so if you could send me an email you. or something, that would be super. Yeah, or I'll call me. You. Yeah, okay. love with you. Yeah, thank you. Love uh, all of us as love itself. Okay. Beautiful. Krista Kaya, do you still have a question? Hi, Sherry. Oh, thank you so much. It is just truly a pleasure to have this. Opportunity to, to Krista, could you raise your volume a little bit or speak a little louder? Yeah, um, I was just wondering about um, the Earth Nation and how you kind of see that um, coming in to support some of the things you've been saying. And also, if you have like a little nugget for us of like a mantra or something that mm -hmm. help, has helped you kind of move through some of those kind of samkaras. Um, any, or anything, anything about that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, we could do another show on um, Earth Dollar, Earth Nation, um, Earth Bank, um, Earth Jubilee. There is a lot there. I really encourage you, the website earthdollar.org just got up, and Earth Nation, what I believe is that we're creating all the different sort of systems that are holding keys to the whole. So there's no longer fragmented pieces, okay? And we're learning how to actually coordinate and cooperate and co-create. It's, it's something that comes out of the fragmented mind now remembering in the deep remembering together that we, can all, we're, we all have a place to play. So I'd love to say more about that um, in, an, in another conversation more deeply. But I want to address the question of like, what's a simple mantra? Um, I chant and I do a lot of um, chanting. Um, if you're new to chanting, I would suggest just going to YouTube and looking up Deva Primal and some of her longer uh, chants. And um, they all, you don't need to really know what they mean, although I like knowing what they mean too, um, but they are vibrational. 
okay? And they will do things for you and it can be very simple. So I love the Gayatri mantra, but it's a little bit more, you know, a little uh, harder to learn right away, but you can listen to it. Um, really simple, um, just even breathing the heart coherence. So this is something that if you get like kind of stirred up or whatever, you can just breathe, drop your, your energy from your mind down into your heart and start to elongate your breath, inhale and exhale. And it happens really fast. And open your heart up to the feeling of compassion or love for something or someone or someplace. And just breathe into your heart from that energy vibration for a couple minutes. That will retune your field. And it will, because we are energy vibrational people, if you do that with others or if you just invite someone to like do that with you, we'll create a field. It's really, it's real. It's like you can measure it. So that's one thing. Another, uh, you know, uh, um, the divine mother, the, the sound of the, is ma so a lot of times i'll be just chanting oh ma 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 when i'm in breath i can feel that <laughs> that just takes me back to like the original temple um and then another one i love of like may all beings be happy is um loka samasta suki no bhavantu Or, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace. Wow, thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Krista Kaya, for that invocation to witness and be present for that. What a wonderful show today. I'm so, so honored. <laughs> I was looking forward to this all week. This <laughs> embodiment, holographic oneness, my favorite topics ever. <laughs> um, Sherry, can you tell us where to find you with your Heart of, Heart of It All podcast? And um, yeah, just so much gratitude for you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, um, oh, um, so you can find me on Facebook. Sherry Herndon and friend me and just put a little message because I get a lot of friend requests and I don't take them all. So just be like, hey, I was on Lovepreneur and I'll be like, yeah. Um, uh, Sherry Herndon on Twitter as well um, and on Instagram. My blog is almost going to be activated um, so I can start writing and I'll probably be writing on my website is viraditas.org, V-I-R-I-D-I-T-A-S. And that is uh, not yet activated fully, but that word is the Hildegard de Bingen word for the life force that flows through all things. And heart of it all, you can find the archives on SoundCloud. So heart of it all. It's like a pretty extensive archive um, going back like six years to 11, 11, 11, which is when we launched the Heart of It All show out of One Becoming One field. And also on iTunes under One Becoming One Heart of It All. And if you want to do live, it's often Fridays at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific, but um, it's uh, lately I have been having to do archive shows because um, of my life being a little too busy. But um, conscious talk radio you can sign up and get the google alerts which means you'll get the archives directly into your inbox and i just want to say thank you for this beautiful field and for the invitation lila star thank you for all your beautiful work and and for the lovepreneur for just bringing that meme into the world and the vibration that you're holding and for all you beautiful women and men ah and everyone listening just uh just Keep breathing into your heart and know that you are a creator and that you have more capacities than you possibly know. Thank you so, thank you so much, Sherry. Um, if we all want to unmute and maybe we can close it out with 
Sherry, we could do an oh ma. Felt so good when you did that. Will you, will you lead uh, up to that? Yeah. We'll just let it wash yeah. away for the next moment. That sounds so great. So let's just take a deep breath in. Oh. Oh. Ma. Blessings, everyone. Thank you for being present for Love for New Our World. Amen. Love is the bottom line. May we all thrive and be happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. Love you all. Bye. 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 Nice to see you all. Sperry, Namula, Valentine, Krista, Kaya. Mm -hmm.